be making bases. All right, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is how to properly add reverb or delay to your tracks. And then this again is going to also help give your track more depth. Um, a lot of times what you wanna think about is what instruments should I be adding reverb to? Should you add reverb to everything or not? I'm gonna go ahead and answer that in this lecture and more. First of all, the kick drum should never have reverb on it. More times than not, never. OK, that's let's deal with that. First of all, a lot of times the bass shouldn't have reverb. And this one particularly does because it's kind of has a it's mixed with a synth sound or whatever. But it should never be, you know, a whole, you know, real have a whole lot of reverb on a bass instrument because you don't want these to kind of come through dry. That way it cuts through the mix better. But sometimes you do want to add reverb to say like your snare, maybe some percussion instruments or some of your um, other melody instruments. And of course, less is always more. So less is more in that you don't want to add reverb to all of the different, every track. And the less is more is you don't want to add too much reverb. But let's start off with the snare. So of course you can add uh, the reverb to like your audio effects section, within your audio effects section, okay? But again, when it comes to your know, mixing, you want to make sure that your, your computer or processing power is high on your computer. So the, lot of, the best way to do this is to, to add it through the sins, through our auxiliary track. All right, now, just like you see right here, um, these, these, the, how the capillary compression is pushing a signal that has a compressor on it to your different um, tracks, it's the same type of thought process when it comes to reverb. Now we have these already to have reverb on here, but it would be the same type of way if you wanted to create a new track with reverb. Go to sins, go to bus, and then go to the next available bus. But since we already have some reverb tracks created here, I'm gonna go with this large hall uh, reverb. And uh, again, it's the same process. If I was to create this uh, track on a new track, say I'm just gonna do it to, for demonstration purposes, come to bus, um, coming to available one, it would be coming in here and then I would just come over here to the audio effects and add it here. So let's say we wanted to do this platinum reverb. Okay. If I did that, then all I had to do is push this up and I can put as much or, or as less reverb as I want. So let's check this out and see how it affects the mix. And you always want to just also try different things here. Like I'm trying different um, types of reverbs. I'm trying a reverb that has like, it's more of a smaller reverb. I'm trying a reverb that's more of a loud, larger sound. Try different reverbs. And it can give you different effects based on the type of reverb you have here. I'm gonna go with this hall effect. And remember what I told you, anytime you add or take away from from the mix, you want to, it's gonna affect all the rest of the mix. So sometimes you have to come through here and readjust the volume level of certain instruments.
All right, and as you can see here, I, I kind of was adjusting, making a slight adjustments to the track, and that was actually kind of helping the track to sound a little bit more clear and everything like that. You can hear all the instruments. You can also kind of still hear that stereo, that um, that reverb coming through here, and it kind of just added a little bit to the track. And now you don't have to add reverb to anything, but it can sometimes affect and help the track. So, for instance, let's say if we added it to a particular instrument, I'm going to take these um, solos off and then solo. This sound already has reverb, so why would I add more to it? It can kind of muddy it up. Again, that kind of has reverb, but let's let's check it out and let's see uh, like what it would sound like. Um, actually, let me put this right here. You see how it kind of muddies up the mix? Because it already has reverb. You don't really need it. kind of actually helped it a little bit. So those are the some things to keep in mind. Not everything needs reverb. You're only adding it to um, a sound if you kind of want to make it, you know, make the track sound a little bit more deep or whatever. Also, some people I've listened to some tracks, they put reverb even on a, on a hi-hat um, and that can actually make it sound a little bit cool. But you want to balance things out because like, for instance, if you have if you ha want to have most of the uh, reverb coming from like you want to do it like this. Basically, if most of the reverb is coming from the instruments, you don't want to have a lot of reverb on the uh, on the drum sounds. Vice versa, if you have a lot of drum uh, reverb coming through the different drum sounds, you don't want to also have a bunch of reverb coming through, you know, some of your melody instruments because it will conf conflict. And then also you want to it's cooler sometimes when you have an instrument that doesn't come in like is consistent. Maybe it comes in every once in a while and that reverb can kind of add a spacious effect. So for instance, say like a crash or say like a sound that might come and go boom, 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 like here and there, here every once in a while. And then that echo will kind of create a, you know, a, a sound or a feel to the track. Again, everything is based on your personal preference and it's also based on how you want to track the sound. So feel free to add it and, or not, but just try it and, and see if it kind of helps the track a little bit. So thanks for watching. We're going to kind of continue to move on here in this mix and I'm going to share a few more tips and tricks and then we'll be done.